They're like, what, really? Yes, it's true. And uh, they're a little blessing. And then our friend Michelle Dooling, her husband, pastors the um, Shelby Wesleyan Church. And she has helped us for a long time. Actually, she has a ministry called Ash Tree Ministries, and she uh, does ventriloquism on her own. Um, but since she's been helping us, she doesn't do a lot of that now. We're kind of a group that the Lord has put together, and we're thankful. So thank you for having us, and uh, we hope you'll be blessed by it because our goal is to glorify God, and I know that's yours as well. Thank you. Hi, good morning. How are you doing today, Anna Grace? I'm doing well, thank you. Hi, Anna Grace. Hi, Heather. How are you doing? I'm okay. Did he introduce me? No, he didn't. Oh. Well, hi everyone, I'm Heather. I'm glad to be here. You know what? The other day, I heard a really nice name. What was it? Uh, it was Heather. I mean, it was Esther. <laughs> That's cool, Heather. I have a friend named Esther. Well, do you know what? There's a famous queen in the Old Testament by that name. Have you ever heard of her? I have. No, but I think <laughs> I'm about to. <laughs> Well, she was a queen over the provinces from India to Ethiopia while the Jews were in captivity there. Was she a Jew? How did she become queen? Was she a good queen? <laughs> oh, God, hold on. One question at a time. Okay. How did she get to be a queen? Well, her parents had died and she was living with her cousin Mordecai. Mordecai? Like... I was mortified when I spilled my cup of water on Pastor Steve's lap. <laughs> no, 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 not like that. His name was Mordecai. Aye, aye. One day, the king decided to begin a search for a new queen. What happened to the old one? Oh, didn't the king get rid of her when she disobeyed him? Yes. The king felt it was necessary because she would not do something that he wanted to be done. Esther was one of the many young women who applied. Like for a job? <laughs> kind of. All the young ladies trained to be a queen for a whole year. Then they were presented to the king, and the one that pleased him would be chosen as the new queen. And he chose Esther. She must have been beautiful. Yeah. She was, and she was smart and had been raised to love God. Was she a Jewish slave? Was she a captive? Yes, the Jews were in captivity, and she was a Jewish slave. Yeah. But her cousin had told her to keep that a secret, and she didn't tell anyone. Did she get a crown? <laughs> More than likely. She was given part of the palace to live in, and she had servants and good clothes and lots of money. Wow, I wish I were a queen like her. Me too. Do you remember her name? Or do you remember her cousin's name? Mordecai. Mordecai. <laughs> That's right, Anna Grace. Mordecai heard two men plotting to kill the king. Uh-oh. He told Queen Esther, and she told the king. After investigating, they found it was true. The king had those two men put to death, and a record was written in the Chronicles. Oh, good thing he chose her to be his queen. That was a great story, Shell. Yeah, thanks, Grandma Shell. But there's more to the story. More? Oh, is this where Marty I I gets his reward? Mordecai, and no, he had been forgotten. But there was a man who was a chief prince. His name was Haman. Haman? <laughs> yes, Haman. The king gave him great authority over the people. Haman wanted people to bow down to him. Why would he want that? Oh, just to show that he was a great man. Did they do it? Yeah, most people were afraid of his power, and they did bow down to him. 
But didn't God tell the Jews that they were only to bow down to the one true God? That's exactly right, Anna Grace. And Mordecai wouldn't bow down. He did it? No, he only worshipped God. Way to go, Marty I I. <laughs> it's Mordecai. <laughs> of course, this made Haman very angry. That makes me very angry. <laughs> he went to the king and told him there was a group of people that were different and had different laws and that he shouldn't let them remain. Hey, king, guess what? In your kingdom, there's a big group of people. They've got their own laws. They've got their own customs. They've got their own God. One of these days, I think they probably won't listen to you. We should just get rid of them all. And he offered to pay the kingdom 10,000 talents of silver if he was allowed to get rid of those people from the kingdom. Hey, King, King, see this bag of money here? If you'll let me get rid of them, I'll give you this whole bag of money for your kingdom. That is terrible. Well, the king didn't know much about the Jews, and he didn't investigate. He just took Haman's advice and gave Haman permission to have them destroyed. Haman issued an order and gave a date that all the Jews were to be put to death. Just because they were Jews? Wait, wasn't Esther a Jew? Yes, but she hadn't revealed that. So Haman had the letter sent to all parts of the kingdom. And when Mordecai heard it, he tore his clothes, put on sackcloth, and went to the king's gate, crying with a loud, bitter cry. Up to half my kingdom, 
It's a pretty big kingdom, you know. Did she ask for a fancy ball gown and a new pony and new clothes? <laughs> no, she just she just asked if she and Haman would come to a banquet that she had prepared for them. Will you and Haman please come to a banquet which I've made for you guys? What? Why would she invite that evil hey. wicked Haman? What is she oh. thinking? Oh. Hold on and you will see. Well, she had the banquet, and again, the king asked her what her petition was, and again offered her anything, up to half of the kingdom. And this is where she asks him to kill Haman? <laughs> no, this is where she asks him if he and Haman would come to another banquet she had prepared for the next day, and there she would ask her request. Oh. I think I would have asked him to get rid of that guy. <laughs> well, she didn't. But guess what? What? When, when Haman received the request from the king and queen, he was so happy. I'm so happy! <laughs> oh, he, when he passed through the gate, the sight of Mordecai not bowing down to him made him mad. I'm so mad! But he put it aside long enough to tell everyone, his family and friends, about going to the banquet and that he was the only guest with the king and queen. Hey, you guys! <laughs> Guess what? I'm going to a banquet. I'm going to a banquet. I'm going to a banquet. And you're not! <laughs> he then added that Mordecai took away all his joy. Yeah, Mordecai! He takes away all my joy! And they suggested that he build the gallows. What? What are gallows? Gallows are a place to hang people when they're executed. Oh no. He thought that sounded like a good idea and ordered one be built. Build the gallows! But that night, the king couldn't sleep. So he asked to have the book of the records of the Chronicles be read to him. Someone read to me from the Chronicles of my kingdom. Why would he want that? Well, maybe to remember what a good king he was. Guess what they read? What? They read about the two men that plotted to have the king killed and how Mordecai had saved his life. Oh, that's good. The king won't want to kill the man that saved his life. Remember, the king doesn't realize who the Jews are or that they're the ones to be killed. So he doesn't know that Mordecai is to be killed. Right. However, he wants to reward Mordecai for saving his life. Good. After finding out that Haman was outside, he asks to have him brought in. Then he asks Haman what he should do for someone he wanted to honor. Oh no, why is that guy always around? The king didn't tell him whom he was thinking about, and Haman couldn't think of anyone else more deserving than himself. So, thinking it was for himself, he said they should put on him the king's royal clothing. Put on him the king's royal clothing! Set him on the king's horse. Put him on the king's horses! With the king's crown on his head. Put the king's crown on my, uh, his head! And have the king's most noble princes take him through the city shouting, Thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delighted to honor. Hey, King, get all your noble princes together. Have them take him through the town, shouting, Thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delighteth to honor. And the king said to do it all for Mordecai. Yeah, do it all for him, M Mordecai. Woohoo, this is getting good. What did he do? Well, he had to do what the king commanded but he wasn't happy. And then he told his wife and friends what happened. 
Did they all realize that Haman was in big trouble? They sure did. But before he had time to do anything about it, he had to leave for the banquet. Oh, yeah. And as promised, when the queen was asked what she wanted, and that the king would give her anything up to half the kingdom, that's right, she asked that her life and the life of her people be spared. Oh, king, please save me and the life of my people. The king had no idea what she was talking about. So she explained about the order. Good. Now he will fix things. I don't think it's that easy. He asked who made the order, and she said it was the wicked Haman. It was Haman. Oh, Haman has to be pretty scared now. Yes, he was. And the king was so angry, he got up and went out into the palace garden. And Haman began begging the queen for his life. No, no. When the king no. returned, he saw Haman on Esther's bed. And that made him even angrier. Then he heard about the gallows that Haman had built to kill the man that he had just honored from one of the servants. Do you know what happened? Did the king say to hang Haman on it? Yes. Still, the law is the law. And the Jews were still scheduled to die. Oh, no. Can't the king just ignore that law? No, that wouldn't be right. Instead, he appointed Mordecai to the position that Haman had had. He gave him permission to write another order telling all the provinces that the Jews were to rise up and fight for their life and that they had the backing of the king. Phew! How did that go? Well, all the Jews were happy. They had great joy and gladness. They had a feast and a good day, and many of the people became Jews. Wow! And you know, they still celebrate with a feast called the Feast of Purim. The Feast of what? Purim. What is that? Well, the Feast of Purim is a day the Jews celebrate not being killed off by Amon. And today, today we are celebrating Palm Sunday. That is the day that we celebrate Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. That is when Jesus began the salvation plan, stopping the destruction and death brought on by the fall of Adam and Eve. Just like Esther was placed in the palace, and Jesus was placed in Jerusalem to complete God's plan, we too are placed here for such a time as this. Such a time 
remember, we know that if it's written in the Bible, it is true. From the story of creation all the way to the second coming of Jesus Christ, we can read the stories, the true stories, about everything, like Noah and the ark, David and Goliath, that's right, and Daniel in the lion's den, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that's right, many others. There are even stories about the first Christians and their journeys. That is why it is important that we read and obey what we learn from our Bibles every day. Did you know that all four Gospels tell the story of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem? Which is what we're celebrating today. Palm Sunday? That's right, Anna Grace. Now, would you and Sarah please pass out the palm branches to those who want to help us out? We would like to invite you all to join us as the girls lead us in a couple of choruses. What are they going to do with those palm branches? <laughs> well, they can wave them as we sing. But Shell, you said something about <coughs> four Gospels. What is that? Well, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all tell us the good news of God's redemption story. We call them the Gospels. And in Matthew 21, Mark 11, Luke 19, and John 12, we can read about how the people threw their coats and palm branches down in front of Jesus as he rode the donkey into Jerusalem. Is that when we have this donkey? <laughs> well, no, that donkey's sitting there so, to remind me to offer them to all the boys and girls here. Cool. Thanks for the reminder. Hey. Before you guys leave, I want to invite you to come up. I have some of these little craft kits here up here in front. And you can grab one of those and um, take them home and make your own donkey. And then take it to a friend and share with them the true story of how Jesus Christ rode into town. And how the people worshipped him, crying, Hosanna. Blessed is he, Anna Grace, you take that one. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Please join us in waving those palm branches and worshiping God with the song, Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, we lift up your name.
a lot of times, uh, well, as we said, and as Pastor Ron well pointed out and others throughout the service, this is Palm Sunday. And uh, what a blessing to recognize that Jesus was able to make his triumphal entry. And he came in and was worshipped by so many. And thus we were talking about the palm branches. And, you know, it's, isn't it strange that within just a few days they went from Hosanna, Hosanna to crucify him. And later this week we will celebrate that with uh, Good Friday. And... Then he was crucified and was buried in the tomb. But then next Sunday you'll be celebrating with us. We won't be here, but you'll be celebrating, as all Christians will be, the resurrection of Christ. And we're so grateful for that, aren't you? And it's because Jesus suffered and died on the cross. And it's because of the fact that he is risen from the dead that shows that he had triumph over sin and death and the grave and that God accepted that sacrifice. And it's because of him that we also can have triumph. We can have victory over sin and over death and over the grave. Because when you've accepted Jesus Christ, you will live forever and you'll be with him. You know, when we come to Resurrection Sunday, a lot of times, uh, what do we think about a lot of times the world tells us it's about the rabbit, right? The bunny. <clears throat> and then sometimes people say, you know, with all the eggs and everything, it, it's, it's really about the duck or a chicken. And uh, so some people think it's about the bunny, other people think it's about the eggs and the duck. But, you know, I want you to know that it's, it's really not about either of those things. So we're just going to get rid of those, okay? We'll just get rid of them. And uh, then, I, it's gone. But I want you to know that it's not about the rabbit. It's not about the duck. But it's actually about the lamb. It's about the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, who came to take away the sin of the world. <clears throat> and he suffered and died for such a time as this, that we might live for such a time as this. I want you to know that God has you here in this time even though things don't seem very good, and we may wish that we lived in a different time. But God has us here for this time. And he has you here in this place for such a time as this. We should be ever so grateful for the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That no matter what our outward circumstances are, that we'll always remember our true circumstance of being in Jesus. And that should be something that we must share with others, no matter what may happen to us, no matter what others may say. We need to be sure to share the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And may you recognize that this is a perfect season for doing so. But the truth is, every season, winter, spring, summer, and fall, is the perfect time. Because none of us knows how long we have to live. None of us know how long our friends, our neighbors, even our enemies will have to live. But might we desire that they do not die without Christ. He died for us. He died for them. God loved us so that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And that all who believe on him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. Pastor Ron, thank you for having us here. I'll turn it over to you.
great message this morning. We have a time of this. We can't go back to yesterday, right? That's right. Because you can't go backwards in time. Even <coughs> back to the future, you can't go back in time anymore. We don't know what tomorrow brings, right? That's right. Tomorrow's a Monday. Most of us got to go to work. But do we know we're going to make it there? Do we know what's going to happen tomorrow? No, we don't. The time is now. And the time of this, of what we're seeing in the world, is, is different than we've seen in the past. That's right. But the one thing that's constant is Jesus. That's right. God has always been there. When we were yet sinners, he was still with us. He didn't turn us back on us. He, he didn't say, uh oh, we're done. He was there with us. And it's amazing how this story, the puppets, brought out a story about Esther. Who would have thought Esther would have had anything to do with Jesus? But she had a lot. Because God put her in that place for the time of this. Just like he brought everyone here today for the time of this. The time to see Palm Sunday. To see the triumphal entry. To see what's going to happen the rest of this week. And the weeks to come. But we have to have that time. I want to thank you guys for coming and sharing today. You guys did a phenomenal job like always. And it gets us all to think again. By puppets. Puppets does a lot for us, doesn't it? It reminds us of when we were kids. And kids today kind of like puppets because they're of that age. But it helps us older people sometimes look at things differently too, doesn't it? But we have to make choices. It's all because of us and our choices. But where we're at, where we're going to spend eternity. It's just like the puppet said, the time is now. The time of this to get us thinking. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for this Palm Sunday. What a time of this. What a time of reflection that we've had today. Father, through Esther, through Mordecai, Father, how strong he had to have been in his faith to no matter what, to not worship Haman. Father, I just think of that whole situation and, and how many times do we think we have to bow down to to something that, that, that has nothing to do with you. Father, help us to not do that. Help us to always look to you and to put you in front of everything else. Father, I pray that you'll help us to search us completely in ourselves and in what it is that we need to do. Because, Father, there's some of us today that are here that that are going through struggles. Can't understand why things are happening in our lives the way they are. But Father, we just need that faith. We need to trust in you. And Father, I pray that you'll help us to accept Jesus as our personal Savior. Father, some of us may need that today. Father, some of us may have done that before. But we need to turn our lives over to you. Father, we need to take this Sunday and say, you know what? I can't do it on my own anymore. I need your help. Father, take everything that's inside of me, all that I am, and let me turn it to you. Some of us, Father, we just need to sit there and say, you know what? I've turned it all over to you. But Father, I need a deeper relationship. I need to get deeper with you. Father, we know that, that you're always there with us. Father, help us to go all in. Father, just like in a sporting event, when we're giving it all we got, Father, help us to give you all that we got, all that there is in us. Father, help us to follow you. Father, we know that times are tough and, and sometimes our lives get busy. Father, help us to slow it down. Help us to relax. Take a deep breath. But Father, help us to follow you. If there's anyone here today that, that 
has a need that wants to come to the altars to pray, the altars are always open. Maybe you need to come and ask Jesus for something. Come up here. Maybe you just need time to talk to God. And you just need the time of peace and quiet to do it. These altars are open. Too many times we think to ourselves, well, I can't go to the altar because that means I'm backslidden. Doesn't necessarily mean that at all. Sometimes we just need to get closer to have that time. And I want to invite you to come forward. If there's anybody that wants to come forward today to pray at the altar, no better time than this to do it. Because we never know what tomorrow's going to bring. We don't know what later today's going to bring. We just know what this moment is. We are here in this moment of time. And God is here with us. I invite anyone who wants to come to come. Did you stop the shower? No. 